Hello again, friends, and welcome back. We're now in 2023, and I'm excited to start off our year with another segment here at Doc G's Wine and Spirits Review. Welcome. It's great to see all of you, and I'm happy to be here to get started in 2023. So, where do we go from here? Um, I can only tell you that my 2023 has started off a little, little rocky in terms of health, if you remember uh, the last spot I did with you, I was still getting through a couple things, and um, luckily I think I'm beyond them now, and I was able to come to you here in the month of January before we start to head into February. So, um, it's my intent to start off on a little bit different note this year with you, and uh, talk about um, something that I alluded to in past episodes uh, with a book that I shared with you called the 12 bottle bar. So our focus tonight is going to be on um, using this book as a springboard for future um, spots as we go on throughout the year. If you notice, the number 12 in this book is not by accident. There are 12 months in the year. So it is my hope that once a month for the 12 months of the year, that I will set aside a spot to share with you some of the cocktails and some of the things uh, in this book that I think pertain to the things I love to talk to you about. So let's get started and uh, let me introduce to you what I'd like to do for you tonight. I know you see a lot of um, company here on the table, but uh, that company is very important in terms of setting up so that when we do future spots, um, it's not really necessary to um, go through the array of things that you see here on the table. But my goal at the end of the night and at the end of these 12 or however many it takes uh, spots is to be able to share with you a summary of the information in this great book called The 12 Bottle Bar which I'd like to give my son credit for, for sharing with me and uh, giving me the inspiration to do this segment. So uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, what this book is all about. It actually is not a new book. It was published in 2014, but it doesn't matter when you discover it, but it is a, a book all about cocktails. And it really simplifies the whole cocktail experience for people who um, are home cocktail makers. One of the premises in the book is that uh, if you like to cook at home, you generally have a pantry that is adequately stocked to pretty much make any kind of uh, meal that you would like to have for you and or company, that you shouldn't have to go out and shop for too much. It's the same premise with the 12 bottle bar, that you have uh, a spirits pantry available to you that you can make spirits at home in a moment's notice without getting into the uh, realm of making spirits that are way out there. Let's face it, there are sometimes you, <laughs> you look up an internet recipe and you go, well, I don't have gentian violet liqueur. <laughs> Most people don't. So what this book does is it takes 12 bottles and it tells you that if you have these 12 bottles, you can make at-home cocktails at a relatively good price point. Because to be honest with you, when you go out for cocktails, you have to decide whether it's fun <laughs> or whether you're making a financial investment in your evening because cocktails can get a little salty depending on what you want to have. So um, that's what this book is all about. Um, I think the uh, hope is that as I share this with you over the coming months, that we can dive a little bit more into what's in the book. It's not my point to try to cover that all in one segment. It would be impossible. So my hope tonight is to give you a flavor. If you wanna go buy this book, it's readily available. I'm sure you can get it on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, wherever it is that you would like to shop for it. But let me give you an introduction to the book and then we'll begin. On the back, I'm reading from the back cover. It's a system, a toolkit, a recipe book, beginning with one irresistible idea, a complete home bar of just 12 key bottles. 
Here's how to make more than 200 classic and unique mixed drinks, including sours, slings, toddies, highballs, plus the perfect Manhattan, the perfect martini, and the perfect mint julep. So um, one of the things that you will find out when you buy the book, tequila didn't make the cut for the 12 bottles, and nor did bourbon. And that has a lot to do with the fact that this really revolves around classic cocktails. I don't know how many cocktails are in this book. I'm, I'm just going to say there are, well, it said here, 200 uh, different cocktails that you could make from this book with these 12 bottles. So I'm excited about sharing that with you. And I'm going to share with you the 12 bottles that are in the, in the 12 uh, cocktail book, uh, the 12 cocktails that you need, um, the 12 bottles, excuse me, that you need. And then each month we're going to focus on one of the bottles and some of the mixers that are required. So the 12 bottle bar is the book. It's the inspiration for this spot. It will be the inspiration for all of the spots that we do related to this. So let me share with you um, all of the friends that are here on the table. Let's start, they really classify them in three different groups. They call them the, the liquors, the things that are the big things. So in the 12, you should have, if you wanna follow this book, you should have a dry gin. I have that here, that's the botanist for me. It's not about which one you have. That's, this is just a very versatile gin, I happen to have it. You need a vodka. I have one that is a Pennsylvania made vodka made by Blue Coat, those who make the Blue Coat gin, Philadelphia Distilling. You're going to need a white rum to make the drinks in this book. You're going to need a dark rum in this book. You're going to need a rye whiskey, which I have here. This is one that I bought in South Carolina. You just whatever rye whiskey you want. And you need a, they have a special gin they call, it's called Jennifer. The difference between Jennifer and regular gin is that it's made with malted grains. It's really not important for right now. And also brandy is a very important part. Generally a, a cognac style brandy. I happen to have Courvoisier here. So let me set those aside. That's your first class of the 12 bottle bar. We don't have to bother counting them because trust me, they're, I wouldn't lie to you. There are 12 bottles here. So let's set that Jennifer aside. Let's set the Courvoisier aside. Then you come to your the 12 bottle bar also, you're gonna need a sweet vermouth and you're gonna need a dry vermouth. And I'm gonna do this now, but I'll reemphasize it later. Don't cheap yourself down on your vermouth. Vermouth is very important and cheap vermouths taste cheap in the glass. So I'll say more about those when we get to that. So there's your sweet and your dry. Then you're gonna need an orange liqueur. For our purposes, it's Cointreau. It could be triple sec. There are others. I like Salerno as well, but this is the one that I chose because the book recommended it. And then you're going to need a bottle of bitters, one called orange bitters, and one called just plain Angostura bitters. So there, my friends, are your 12 bottles. With these 12 bottles, you could entertain your friends and make so many cocktails for yourself and them that it will make your head spin. <clears throat> so with that said, from the 12 bottle bar, I have chosen for our first go round here this month, I have chosen a drink that mimics one of my favorite drinks and that is a martini. But the drink that I'm gonna make for you tonight is not a martini, it's called a Metropolitan. So our first month, we are going to feature a drink that features brandy. It doesn't only feature brandy, but it also sweet, uh, features the sweet vermouth and it features the Angostura bitters. So what I did was I prearranged those and I'm gonna to read to you the recipe. It's two ounces of cognac style brandy and brandy is simply um, distilled grapes. And in this case, I don't wanna get into brandy tonight. I've already talked to you about brandy in other spots. This brandy is fantastic. Courvoisier is one of my favorites. It's made from the Ungi Blanc grape, distilled, and it becomes uh, alone, a very great sipper, but it is also made with a lot of cocktails. You can buy Remy Martin, and you can buy other, uh, I would recommend kind of VS style, because they're meant to be used in mixed drinks. Most cognacs, you wanna to try to have alone, 
but the VS style is the style that you want to use for mixed drinks. This also has an ounce of sweet vermouth, a half a teaspoon of orange liqueur, in this case Cointreau, some bitters, and we're going to garnish it with lemon. I'm going to make it for you right now. It has a Luxardo cherry, which you can find on your own. Let me get these out of the way as we get ready for. So you need yourself a nice mixing glass. In this case, I pre-mixed all of those ingredients. We'll throw them in there. Oop, a little spillage. <laughs> That's okay. 15 seconds of shaking. Chill it. This helps mix up all of the uh, ingredients in a nice little froth. Chilled your glass. My glass was pre-chilled. Beautiful color. You pour it right in there. The recommended glass is a chilled martini glass. We'll set that aside. We'll drop our Luxardo cherry in and our little lemon twist. Put that in there. And voila, mes amis, you have yourself a Metropolitan. Now, truth be told, Doc G has never had a Metropolitan. That's about to change right in front of your eyes. So cheers, here we go. Mm. That does not disappoint. It's a little power packed, but that's the kind of drinks I like. Now, if you look in the book, they have different levels of drinks that you can make. But you notice here tonight, from the 12 bottle bar, we sampled from one group, two groups, the three major groups of the uh, liquors, the mixers, and the vermouths. So that's what happens. You combine all of these into different drinks, and the combinations are just about endless. So for the next time when we get to the 12 bottle bar, we're going to move on to the next one of the liqueurs or the next one of the major groups, either a rum, a gin, or whatever, I'll surprise you. We'll have to wait and see until the next time. So let me take another sip of this to see how this is sitting. Not much of an aroma. Hmm. I can tell you, very smooth on the entrance and very smooth on the follow through. So again, We'll talk about this in more detail. The 12 bottle bar, if you're interested and don't want to wait 12 months until I explain everything in here, go get the book. You might be surprised that if you are a serious cocktail drinker, that you may already have quite a few of these bottles in your collection. I'm going to tell you without a word of lie, I had the 12 bottles in the 12 bottle bar before I even decided to do this spot for you tonight. So I know that I already had all of these. I actually have the tequila and the bourbon that they don't recommend for these. But remember, this book is based on classic cocktails that have been around forever. And I, I love Negronis. Negronis are not in here because Campari is not considered one of the 12 bottles that go in to the 12 bottle bar. <laughs> Guess what? I don't need the 12 bottle bar to tell me that I want a Negroni. But I do like the fact that anytime I have company or want to have a cocktail that includes all of these different things, they are all ready on hand. It would be just like making a meatloaf. You want to make sure you have your meat, your breadcrumbs, your spices, your eggs, and everything in the house. No one wants to have to run out and get what they need every time they want to have something homemade. So in order to do your homemade cocktails, the 12 bottle bar is the book that you need. Go get it, I'll post it, and so that from now on when I talk about it, you already know what I'm talking about. So until the next time, the Metropolitan is waiting for you. Cheers, and we'll see you real soon.